Greetings shippers, welcome back, and we are done with our Star Wars updates, so it's time to move on. We've done Storm Pilot, we've done Raylo, we've done Kylux. I'll have links to all of those videos down below, or you can click one of the cards. And of course, if you want to know what's coming up next, then be sure to follow me on social media. We chat about all kinds of things, it's a fun time, I swear. So now it's time to take a look at a ship we haven't looked at before. We didn't get around to it after The Force Awakens, but it needs to be talked about now more than ever. That being the pairing of Finn and Rey, sometimes known as Faye, and even rarer still as Jedi Storm. Jedi Storm sounds like a mission designation. I wish more people used it. This pairing is intriguing, as on the surface it appears to have all the materials required to become a dominant ship, and yet it still manages to remain below the radar. The fact that it has been able to remain so largely undiscussed in comparison to other ships is in and of itself noteworthy. So why exactly has this ship been so largely ignored? And has it been, or is that just a perception? In order to examine that, one must analyze multiple factors. So let's get started. First off, let's meet the players and chart their journey together, starting with Finn, ex-stormtrooper who has recently defected at the time when he encounters Rey. Finn is earnest, well-intentioned, and looking to prove himself and discover who he is and what he is worth. He takes quickly to people and is eager to help, forming fast friendships and developing quite a loyal streak to those who he deems worthy, an assessment he can make quickly and accurately after his years in the First Order. Despite this, he can occasionally rush into things without thinking, but he more than makes up for that with his bravery and willingness to do whatever it takes. Next up, Rey. Starting off her journey as a scavenger on Jakku, Rey is guarded and lonely as she dreams of acceptance, friendship, and ultimately being someone of real worth. Independent by circumstance rather than by choice, Rey is slow to trust, although her defenses can be breached by more open individuals, of whom Finn is one, though even that takes a little time. She too is seeking to learn who she is, a journey she begins at nearly the same time as Finn, who proves to be her companion for some of that journey. As her arc unfolds, she discovers an inner strength and ability to stay true true to herself, as she slowly begins to understand who exactly that is. Canonically, Finn and Rey form a deep, tangible bond, coming to care quite deeply for each other and put themselves in harm's way for the other. While their destinies align, they seem to be taking them down slightly different paths. Though even when apart, they care for each other and are on each other's minds, even if Finn is more demonstrative about it than Rey. The two are set to grow together, seeking answers to the same questions, who am I, what am I worth, and what does it all mean? They have both been thrust into a new existence where they must make choices they never imagined, and have become heroes before they have even fully come to terms with their new positions. The comfort and camaraderie they share evolved quickly but naturally, and while less present in The Last Jedi, was still palpable in their reunion. Indeed, taking it one step further, there are many sequences that could easily be read as romantic, at the very least on Finn's side, though it could easily be read that way from both. From Finn asking if Rey has a boyfriend, Rey's forehead kiss, did he hurt you, the two saving each other, the passionate eyes shut hug, making sure they have final messages for the other, and much more. Enough that not only would it normally seem to be a canonical probability, but a fandom hit as well. And yet on both fronts, many fans and creators remain curiously silent. Even if it is discussed, it is not with the same frequency or fervor as other ships. Some would argue that even rarer pairs such as Damaray have received more attention. Before we examine why that is, let us examine the many reasons people who do enjoy this pairing ship them. For many shippers, the pleasant and natural evolution of their relationship as showcased with an actual canon is appealing. Two characters growing together, helping one another, and yet remaining independent and experiencing their own significant arcs. Although some would argue following The Last Jedi, that is no longer the case for Finn. The two strengthen each other and give the other support and a potential companion in a dark and oft times inhospitable world. Both being outside and new to the experiences that await them, the two could further their bond, learning the ropes of their various roles together. In short, the two have a solid foundation for a loving, healthy relationship, with both respecting the other and trusting each other. Neither character feels lessened by their connection, and the ship has a pleasant, cute feeling that many gravitate towards. This was then boosted for some by the chemistry between the actors playing each character, as some people use such real-life cues to supplement their fandom. On top of that, for interracial couples or people who are products of them, it was nice to flirt with the idea of such positive representations especially as this new trilogy has made such an obvious and vocal effort to be more diverse. However, some feel that this may be why the ship is so ignored and by some disavowed. So with all of the aforementioned positives, why does some not only not support, but actively dislike this ship? Well, let us start with smaller rationales and work our way to larger ones. For some, other ships captured their attention straight away, from Storm Pilot to Raylo. There were some who were more compelled by these ships, perhaps somewhat fueled by what little evidence there was for them within the text, although Raylo shippers would argue there was plenty 
of subtext. In short, it may be for some a case of not being drawn to the traditional canon couple, feeling that the arc is played out or boring. Whereas many feel that Storm Pilot represented something new and were drawn to the meat cute, as Finn and Poe have a much more positive first few moments than Finn and Rey, while others were drawn to the darkness of Raylo and what many felt was an underlying sexual undertone. And of course, those are just the two more popular shippings. There are other subships for these characters as well. And as some shippers pick an OTP, that being one true pairing and do not stray from it, examining other ships is not on their agenda, not necessarily out of maliciousness, but rather a lack of interest. However, some would argue that the meeting between Finn and Rey lays the groundwork for the archetypical romance narrative, down to the initial coolness. Well, to examine that, one must examine Rey's character and how the creators seem to wish her to function within the story. Now, there are some fans who simply do not like Rey, feeling she is a fanficish insert character, often referred to as a Mary Sue. A to some controversial term, though it is still oft used within fandom, as well as applied to either gender. So it stands to reason that if one does not like the character, they are less likely to ship them. Though as we discussed in the General Hux and his beloved cat video, sometimes fandom and fandom can be used to expand upon such characters, and indeed this often happens within Raylo as well as these who ship this ship. So if that is the case, then why is this ship not more prominent? Well, for some, it could be argued that Faye is the more logical ship, as it is firmly rooted within canon, and that the shipper most likely to ship it would be one who enjoys ships with firm foundations, or what some would call proof. However, the text of The Force Awakens, flirtation aside, actively dissuades this ship by having Rey reject Finn at multiple points, particularly violently when he attempts to hold hands with her while the two flee during a pursuit, which for many is the key off-putting moment. This fed into the perception of some that a relationship would actually be potentially unhealthy for these two, that perhaps Finn was not ready for such a level of intimacy having just so recently come into contact with such different types of people, and that based on his characterization, he may have the tendency to become a bit codependent. This combined with how damaged some people viewed Rey to be led them to not want to ship these two. However, while the hand-holding moment may emphasize the end for some, for others it is the beginning. Particularly as Rey establishes her own dominance by being the one to take Finn's hand, they feel that that is her taking control of the relationship that should still develop to be romantic, at least on her terms. As a result, even though the same cues are present, they can be interpreted in vastly different ways. As a result, there is a conflict between their chemistry and the narrative that appears to be implying that a strong female character is a single one. A common trend at the time of this recording is many fear that giving a female character a romantic interest either weakens her as a character or shifts the focus off either her or the plot onto the romance, an occurrence that some writers feel is a trap that leads to stereotypes. And romance is very much a maligned genre at the current moment. It must be noted that a romance, be it for a male or female character, need not be a detriment. It can be well written and highlight the many positives of cooperation and support, although of course, they are often poorly written. As for Rey, many embrace her single status, and it's come to the point where there is a clash of fans, some who want a canon romance for her, and others who don't. Her own actress Daisy Ridley has discussed how she hopes the character finds intimacy, though not romance. And some feel this would be in keeping with her role as essentially the new Luke of the series. To which some wonder, why do romance and intimacy need to be deemed mutually exclusive, while others relish the idea of breaking the mold and having no romance. Though The Last Jedi makes it clear they are attempting to delegate the romance to the side characters. Also, the romance as weakness is played up in deleted scenes. More on that later. So for some, seeking an independent Rey and taking the text on its own terms explains the lack of shippers, or at least the lack of mainstream attention, as may be possible the creators feel their intentions are clear. However, there are some who feel that something much more insidious is going on, both in canon and fandom, that being racism. Similarly to the arguments you often hear when queerbaiting is being discussed, nailing that the tropes on display were the characters heterosexual would end with them being together. Together. The same argument is made here, but in terms of if both characters were Caucasian or Black. This can be linked to what some view as deep-rooted beliefs of miscegenation, held in various parts of the Western world, particularly in regards to this racial mix. Beliefs that some feel are so ingrained that they are subconsciously or consciously at play in the scenario, keeping people from seeing the chemistry as it is simply not the norm or expected. Viewing it as a mental barrier. People don't ship these two because they can't. America in particular has had a long, hard history with depicting mixed couples, and the real-life harassment people experience is still intense in some places, though it has also eased in others. For this reason, many are frustrated as they feel this ship would be a perfect chance to further break down some racial barriers, canonically, and the lack of acknowledgement feels like a deliberate rejection, especially in light of new knowledge surrounding deleted scenes of Finn's new love interest, Rose, berating him for being hung up on Rey, with some view as him being told it is inappropriate for him to be gazing at a white woman. A particularly painful history as the dangerous black man who should not be allowed near our woman stereotype is not dead, and even when it comes to depicting interracial couples, the pairing of African-American man and Caucasian woman is
is still rare and fraught with a painful history. Some feel that this is the true reason the ship has not taken off in fandom, and the secret behind Raylo's popularity and paradoxically Storm Pilots, even though that is another minority ship. For some, they ask that viewers reimagine the film, casting both characters as one race, and see if that changes their feelings about the pair. However, some shippers reject this notion and counter that the reason the pairing receives so little attention is because the notes it hits are so traditional, and fandom is often a space for the taboo. And some feel that this is not only no longer a taboo, but also suffers from being a pleasant ship, which tends to be less popular than those with more conflict at their base, as many shippers find conflict gives them more to work with. And some would even go so far as to say these negative slants are being applied maliciously to discredit their pairings, and passions quickly run high, with accusations being flung back and forth, a common one being that those who ship Finray may actually be homophobic, and that is why they do not instead ship Storm Pilot. As a result of these assumptions, many can come out of these discussions with their feelings hurt, not to mention with the view that the fandom is at least somewhat toxic. However, all of this aside, some feel the greatest omission is simply the lack of discussion surrounding this whole topic. Storm Pilot and Raylo and even Kylux have received some mainstream attention, while this ship remains largely an afterthought, which is a shame, as like all the other ships, it is valid. And it is interesting, with many shippers writing complex narratives, producing beautiful art, and really expanding upon the ample framework. Some would also argue that there was conflict there, it simply needs to be elaborated upon. For many shippers, The Last Jedi was still a triumph for this ship, for while the two had very separate arcs and different love interests, some would actually argue that the film shut down those avenues, and that the reunion between Finn and Rey heralded a new beginning. So for many, the chemistry remains very much intact, and they do still yearn for that canon representation. Though as with all the pairings, it remains to be seen what will happen. For many who've desired the ship to be canon, they are equally frustrated because instead of fandom being a sanctuary for their pairing, it seems to be equally ignored there. But it must be noted that there is indeed a space for this pairing within fandom, and many who do enjoy it. And as always, we must take note of all the multi-shippers, those enjoying multiple Star Wars ships, and particularly with this ship, the Polly Shippers. As following The Force Awakens, many fans simply opted out of choosing between Finn and Rey and Finn and Poe by shipping all three, in the pairing known as Jedi Storm Pilot. It must also be noted that many enjoy this as a friendship, and that the preference for a lack of romance need not be a grand feminist gesture, but instead a preference for this particular story, which some feel does not need it. Some even go so far as to ponder if the longing for romance is an attempt to recreate the magic of the original trilogy couple Luke and Leia. While it may not be very talked about and its fans scattered, Faye is definitely present and enjoyed by many. A cute, healthy ship for fans of slow burn, gradual realization, and especially friends to lovers, and of course, so much more. As mentioned, there are a wide array of works, so if this pairing interests you, dive in. As always, ships are varied and people gravitate towards them for a variety of reasons. One should not feel bad for not being interested in a ship. However, sometimes it is fun to check out other ships and see what they have to offer. And if one is ever worried they are being disingenuous to a ship for less than stellar reasons, some introspection is never harmful. However, on the flip side, one should not assume the motivation and intent of others, as when fans begin to second guess and harass each other over ships, canon, or what favorite character, or what have you, toxicity in the fandom is not far behind. Fandom can be fundum, so long as respect is married with discourse and a sharing of ideas. As always, keep shipping and enjoying your fandom. How do you guys feel about this ship? Do you enjoy it, or was it a bit too obvious for you? Or are you one of those no-romance people? While researching this, it became clear that many Fae shippers were baffled as to why the ship was getting so little attention. So hopefully this made some shippers feel less alone. There are people out there shipping it with you. So, on top of everything I've already asked you to do, I'm gonna ask you to answer one more question. What is one ship that you have that no one else seems to care about? Share it and everything else down below. As always, thanks for spending some time with me, and let's all give a big thanks to Claire for the decrease in lens flare going on in my glasses. It's still there because if you've been watching me for a while, you know I have a habit that I like to be a Muppet, meaning I like to stick my head up like a Muppet. Every time I talk, it just goes up. Ah. Yeah, sometimes I'm cringy. I'm a mom. I'm allowed. Enough of all that, follow me on social media to stay up to date, and let's get to that outro. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons, and the monthly vote for February is currently ongoing, so check that out if you haven't voted. Many exciting videos coming soon, so stay tuned, because there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.